Good morning to everybody. Uh, first, uh, our game time has been changed on Saturday night. Uh, it was moved from 7 o'clock ESPN to 7.30 ABC National. And that's because there was a change in some other game because of COVID. Uh, so 2020 just continues to be a year of change. So it will be 7.30 ABC National uh, on Saturday night instead of seven o'clock ESPN. And I think the other game that, that is uh, in question was Baylor and Oklahoma State as you, you start looking at your stuff. Uh, happy to have fans in the stadium on Saturday. It, it did make a difference. There were only 3,500, but the students were a huge factor and it was fun and felt a little bit more like a, a normal game for us. So uh, it'll, it'll be fun to have uh, fans in the, the stands at Florida State. Um, so it'll uh, feel more like normal than anything else. Uh, happy for the win on, on Saturday. Virginia Tech's been a, a tough opponent for North Carolina for years. Uh, Coach Fuente had beaten us four in a row. And um, over the years, the, that uh, a game that we'd had trouble winning. And, and then even last year with the six overtimes, we had our opportunities and, and didn't get that accomplished. So uh, really happy. It's a, a huge win for us. And um, um, a game for our program that we needed. Uh, happy also that we're fifth and sixth in the country in the polls. It's fun. It's good for recruiting. It's it's good for our fans to uh, to have some bragging rights. And we haven't been rated for a long time uh, this high. And uh, it uh, uh, does it mean anything? No, not really. I, I've always told the players until the college football playoff polls come out, probably be in November this year, that that's the first time I even look at the polls because then we, everybody has a resume. Uh, we know who's good and who's not. We've got a couple of teams, few teams right now that everybody think are great. And then the rest of us are a lot alike. And it depends on injuries and who's healthy enough to play. And it depends on how you play that Saturday. So uh, we're one of those teams. We're a team that has to play well every Saturday uh, before we can have a, a chance to win. And, and that's what we've told the guys. So uh, how do we manage expectations? We just tell the truth. And we're factual with them and, and we'll continue to do that each week. Uh, we are making progress. Uh, we're ahead of schedule. We're learning how to win. We're, we're winning differently each weekend, which is something that's Im important to note. Uh, so the defense struggled some on, on Saturday against a really good Virginia Tech offense and the offense stepped up and had its best day. So that's just uh, what you have to do to, to be able to win. Um, Offensively, we have great balance, and that's who we want to be is, is what we saw on Saturday. We had 186 yards rushing at halftime, 186 yards passing. Uh, Sam had a, a fantastic day. Uh, oh, my gosh, he, after the game, I said, hey, great game. He said, well, I threw that one low to Dummy. I mean, that's, that's Sam. He's a perfectionist. But he, he called the game well. He got us in the right plays, uh, and he, he managed the, the, the entire game well. And the offensive line played by far their best game. Uh, they, they dominated the line of scrimmage. In fact, the offense for us dominated this game, and that's the reason we won the game, because their offense was very, very good. We knew that, and then uh, we didn't play as well in the second half as we needed to on, on defense. Uh, but uh, other than one sack, uh, uh, we had three drops, and the rest of it, uh, we played well. So when you can pick out four plays on offense that you'd like to have back, uh, it's, it's usually a, a really good day. The other thing that I was very, very impressed with is uh, no turnovers on offense, obviously, but the fact that we were five for five for touchdowns in the red zone. And that's an area that we really wanted to improve. Um, and uh, the, it says five for six on the stats. We took a knee on the last one, so I'm, I'm not going to count that. But uh, when we were trying to score, the guys were five for five for touchdowns. Um, defensively, you, you got to give Virginia Tech credit on offense. They were rushing for over 300 yards coming in. I'm not proud that we held them to 260. I don't think that's an accomplishment. Uh, but they, uh, you, you look at guys like Hooker, he plays so well. He's big. He's fast. He, he can beat you running the ball. Uh, he can run the option. He can throw it downfield. He's tall. He can see. He's hard to tackle. And then you, you Trey Thompson, Mitchell, Herbert, they've got really good players on offense, that offensive line's really good. So uh, the combination of, of them being really good and then in the third quarter, we stayed on the field too long. We gave up a couple of big plays and, and then the onside kick was a killer. A 
because we were too wide. We weren't lined up where we should have been. Uh, they did a, a really good job kicking the ball. It was the perfect kick and, and recovery, but that kept us on the field for two complete drives. And, and we don't have a lot of depth on, on defense and, and we've got a lot of inexperience on our defense. So uh, it put us in a tough spot, uh, but then uh, uh, I was proud that our offense came back and, and dominated the fourth quarter again. We missed too many tackles. We gave up too many big plays. Um, a lot of things we've got to fix. Uh, I thought the biggest thing that, that we, we gave up three touchdowns for three trips in the red zone. Uh, so as many things as we did well on offense, we, we didn't do well on defense, but we did play well enough to win. We have got to force ourselves to play younger players earlier in the game so we can get some rested legs. It happened to us last year. The coaches still aren't trusting the, the players enough. Uh, me neither. We got to put them out there. And we're in tight games all the time, so it's hard to do. And again, we, we mentioned Charlotte before. It hurt us that we didn't get a chance to play those guys. But you can really get better in games a lot more than practice. You can get your fundamentals in practice, but the, without game experience, you can't get where you, where you need to, to be. And we're still not forcing um, turnovers on defense. We, we dropped two balls that we could have had as interceptions. We're not stripping the ball. We, we've got to do a better job in those areas. It's uh, amazing we're 3-0 and with as few turnovers as we forced for, for the year. Um, so we're still a, a work in progress on defense. I was just thinking that uh, Kyler McMichael played mostly special teams at Clemson his first year. He was out last year. So he's played three games at corner. And then you start looking at Don Chapman. He's a a very young safety, Cam Kelly, really played his first full game on Saturday, and Patrice Renee's been out for a year. So um, a lot of um, inexperienced in those positions. Uh, special teams, by and large, were, were good. Ben Kiernan punted for uh, over 45 yards of a punt. Our coverage was excellent. Um, Grayson Atkins was 100% with his extra points, and Jonathan Kim continues to, to be a huge factor for us with his kickoffs because he didn't let Herbert touch the ball uh, very often at all. Um, and when we had the, uh, the very poor unsportsmanlike penalty and moved the kickoff back, he, he made an outstanding tackle on Herbert uh, that could have saved a touchdown. So uh, good for Jonathan Kim. Uh, and then we, we continue to have too many penalties. Um, we, we have got to clean that up. That, that's 10 penalties, three straight weeks. And, and uh, we keep screaming, we keep harping, but it's, it's the same old thing. So it, it needs to get fixed. The players of the game offensively, uh, everybody played well. Uh, the receivers blocked well, the tight end blocked well. Those backs are really special. Sam played one of his best games, but uh, the coaches voted the entire offensive line as the uh, players of the game on offense. Uh, the player on the game, player of the game on defense was uh, Kyler McMichael uh, because he, uh, he was out there by himself on an island and stood up. They only completed one ball on him, and the special teams player of the game was uh, Jonathan Kim. Uh, really proud of the fourth quarter. We got whipped in the fourth quarter at uh, Blacksburg last year, uh, but we had the ball for 10 minutes and 11 seconds in the fourth quarter compared to 4 minutes and 49 seconds. We had 161 yards rushing compared to their 27 um, and 203 yards com total yards compared to their 77. And I thought the offensive staff did a tremendous job of slowing the game down uh, with about 10 minutes left to go without stopping our momentum. And that's hard to do. So I was proud of them. Uh, Florida State, uh, let me first say our thoughts and prayers continue with Coach Bowden. Uh, he's uh, a special man, and I've got a picture of he and I uh, with that, that great game that we had here uh, in my office, and uh, I always want to have a program that was as good as his. It's uh, 14 straight years, as best I remember, of fourth or better in the country and, and national championships during that run. So uh, what a, a consistency, and nobody's ever done it better than Coach Bowden. So, um, Coach, we love you, and, and we hope you're doing well. Um, as far as Miami's concerned, once again, Mike Norvell was a high school coach in, in Dallas um, when I was at Texas, and he, he was a superstar at Tulsa. And then uh, he was the hot young offensive coordinator at Arizona State for Todd Graham. Took the job at Memphis, and I had a lot of his games uh, for my three years. And uh, I could tell he was going to be a superstar as a head coach. He was a guy that I had on my list as hiring as a coordinator uh, when, when I – uh, was at Texas and if it ever came open and then same thing when it, it uh, he got to be a head coach 
and, and I thought as I was looking around, this guy is, uh, he's, he's one of the next great young coaches that's out there. So I'm not su surprised that Florida State uh, uh, jumped all over him and, and uh, he will do a super job there. Um, there. You can tell they're already headed in that direction. Uh, they got a very tough uh, early schedule. To have to play Miami and uh, Notre Dame on the road, uh, most of us would have lost those two games. So um, that they're, uh, they're getting better. They're the most talented team we've played to this point. They're huge and can run on defense. Uh, Marvin Wilson's uh, number one draft pick is a defensive tackle. He's 6'5", 305 pounds and can run. Uh, Gainer is all over the place as a, a linebacker. And all I have to do is say the name of a, a great corner, and that's Asante Samuel Jr. because Senior was a, a tremendous player. And they brought in uh, Jordan Travis the other day in the Notre Dame game, and he's, he's played really, really well at quarterback. And uh, we always know that Florida State's got some of the best skill in the country. So questions? Okay, thanks, Coach. Uh, just a reminder to the group, use the raise hand function if you have a question. And please state your name and media affiliation. We will begin today with Dina King. So, Dina, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Dina King, Tar Heel Illustrated. You spoke about fourth quarter success last year. When Virginia Tech cut that lead to uh, deficit to five points, how big was scoring back-to-back -back touchdowns in the fourth quarter? Dina, really good teams answer when somebody scores. And that's what you have to do. And that's what we told our team. As long as we keep scoring, they can't outscore us. And, and then the, the same thing at the end, we, we slowed the game down because we were having trouble stopping them. They were having trouble stopping us. So it just made sense that uh, it doesn't matter uh, the, the number of points you beat somebody by, you just want to win the game. Uh, but uh, that, that was a, a huge answer at that point. We had chance after chance to, to keep it at 21 or more, but the 20 unanswered points in the third quarter put us back in a game. And then we had to work our way back out. So really, really proud of the offense that nobody panicked. Uh, nobody was screaming at each other on, on the sideline and nobody got frustrated. Everybody just went back to work and uh, did what they'd been doing all day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move over to Luke Buxton. Hey, Coach. Taken back to 1997, last time you took the heels to a top five ranking in the AP poll. I'm curious what the difference was, in not only the two teams, but also kind of in your career and your you know, mentality, your, your thoughts, your passions, your drives of, of taking that team to a top five ranking versus this team 23 years later to a top five ranking. Luke, that team was deeper and more talented, uh, especially on defense, because we had been good for a long time. Um, we're, we're ahead of where I thought we would be at this time, but we still don't have enough depth. We, we still don't have enough experience in key positions on defense. Offensively, we've been around for a while. The guys have all played. Uh, there, there's no new starters that you just throw out there and you, you have to play. Uh, but defensively, we're, we're not there yet. We needed spring practice. We need the Charlotte game. We needed to develop some depth, and, and we haven't gotten that. So I think the biggest difference in the two right now is we're, pro we're probably more explosive now on offense than we were back in 97. But the defense at that time was the best defense in the country. Uh, so they were, they were dominating games and not letting anybody score. And um, when Coach Bowden brought his bunch in, I actually thought we were four and five at that time uh, in, in the polls, um, and they were one, and it was one of the best teams I've ever seen. I think I called them the NFL East or something. Uh, they were so good. Uh, but that's what was wrong at that time. Florida State was better, and all the rest of us were second or, or below because they were the best team in the country. Um, but that, that's, uh, that's what we want to get back to having teams like we had then, uh, especially on defense. All right, let's go over to C.L. Brown. All right, Max, C.L. Brown, uh, Raleigh News and Observer, kind of piggybacking on that. Would you say that uh, mentioning how much more explosive the offense is now as opposed to 97, would you say that's a byproduct of the game today itself? It's like, you know, a lot of the rules have been changed to make offenses more explosive than they were back in the 90s or – or as you said, it's, it's a matter of, you know, the, the amount of skilled guys you have and just how the offense has been built. 
Uh, see, uh, we were talking about this yesterday, and Alabama's given up 45 points, and LSU's given up 45 points, and uh, Texas and Oklahoma are 53 to 48 or something. It, it's just uh, it's just a different game right now than it was back then. I think our defense was giving up 202 yards and 9.7 points or something a game, and people do that on the first drive now or the second drive of the game. Um, I think it's a, a product of all of the above because we've, we've talked about it and we've, we've tried to study it. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt that the rules uh, make it easier on offense than defense uh, because uh, uh, I really think people want to see points scored. That's how you get uh, viewers. That's how you get people at the game. So um, it, it's always been that way. Uh, secondly, uh, with the hurry up, they're, they're spreading people out more and they're going faster. So you've got to be too deep of really good players on defense to stop anybody uh, because they're, they're going fast and, and you're one-on-one -on -one in a lot of different uh, situations. So uh, there, there's just more opportunity for people to score. And, and um, I think that because you can go so fast, it limits some of the calls you can make on defense. So it's simplifying some defenses as they spread out and then you add COVID to it, I, I do think that the conditioning's down. And, and that, that affects defense more than it affects offense because those defensive guys got to chase that ball for three and a half or four hours. And games are longer now because everybody's throwing the ball so much. Uh, but I, I think it's all of the above. And I think you're exactly right. Uh, uh, people are, are winning games 56 to uh, 49 and being happy with it. I mean, it's just a, it's a, a, a different thing. I remember we beat Baylor maybe my last year, or next to my last year at Texas, and it was one of those 57-54. And I walked off the field mad. And I better not be mad anymore. You got to figure out how to win and just forget it because uh, a lot of people are scoring a lot of points. All right, and I, and I also wanted to uh, ask about the first possessions. You guys are three for three um, scoring touchdowns on the first drive of each game. What would you say has kind of the, been the secret to that success so far? Uh, I really think it's scheming going into the game. Uh, the, we've had a, a great plan and the guys are excited and they're ready to play. And then in the first two games, I thought we got frustrated some after that, but we didn't have the ball in the third quarter this game. We didn't have the ball in the second quarter uh, against Syracuse because we had a turnover offensively and we, we dropped a punt uh, on special teams. So we, we lost two possessions there. Um, so this is the first time our offense has been in sync. And I, I thought the offensive coaches had a tremendous plan of getting the ball out of Sam's hand quickly, getting it to our playmakers and, and, um, and letting those two backs run. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Coach, if we can take one quick break and we can announce the NC State game time if you would like. Yes, the NC State game will be at noon. Uh, and it will be either on ESPN or ACC Network. We're just giving you all all kinds of information today. Great. Thanks, Coach. We will go over to Andrew I was, Jones. I did know that, Andrew, at uh, 11, but I was threatened not to say it until it was released by the ACC Network. So if I, was, if I had forgotten and slipped because of my experienced age, I was going to blame Jeremy. You were trying out for Jeremy and Mark's job. <laughs> yes. Uh, staying on the 97 game, uh, that week, uh, the media, national media dubbed that as Judgment Day. There were a couple other big games that went on in the country. Uh, at the time, uh, ES or ABC didn't do many primetime games, so ESPN primetime was the big game. You guys were on. Game day was in Chapel Hill that day. Can you kind of take us back to the hype building up to what a lot of people still regard as the most important game this program has ever played that weekend? Yes, I wish we'd won it. Then it would have been the most important one that, that we've ever played for sure. But I just remember the hype for the week and so proud that uh, our football program was getting so much attention nationally. And, and that's who you want to be. And, and it, it was helping recruiting. And um, I remember Coach Bowden, who I, I really admire uh, and, and love. Before the game, he came out in his, his good old way and uh, put his arm around me and said, it's packed. Uh, I mean, it, there were people hanging off the, uh, the, the sides of the stadium. It was so full. And he said, hey, boy, I never thought I'd see anything like this. This is really cool. 
and and uh, and it was it, it was uh, it was it was who we wanted to be at that time. And I thought we had finally arrived, and and then we couldn't block them. They were just so talented and beat us twenty to three, and and um, it, it was a great game, but it was a defensive game and very very physical. Um, and and that's uh, uh, that's my memories of Florida State as we get ready to go to Tallahassee. Another as we kind of connect some weird dots from 97 to this week, the last time Carolina played a game at, in their top five was that week. It happened to be against FSU. It's also the last time you faced your alma mater, if I'm not, if I'm correct, uh, as a coach. So what are your kind of thoughts about that? All these, these, these dots being connected 23 years apart. Oh, it, it's uh it is true. I hadn't thought about it till right now, but uh, I haven't coached against them. I haven't been back to Tallahassee. Uh, so it'll, it'll be fun. And so much has changed down there since, since coach Bowden left. Um, but, uh, Jimbo Fisher won a national championship. They're, they're still very talented. Um, and, and, uh, we're going to have our hands full. Uh, I mean, that's, uh, so it, it feels no different than, uh, going to Tallahassee to play a very talented team that, uh, uh, will, will be a, um, a tough game for us. I, I've always said to myself, when you, you've got a challenge, you, the a positive person takes that as an opportunity. And um, uh, these guys are so good. When you start watching their tape this week, you'll be amazed. And and they're going to be a really good team by the end of the year. I hope it's not this weekend. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Alyssa Ray, go ahead. Hey, Coach, we talked last week about the potential of this offense, and you said you just wanted them to settle down and have fun. 56 points later, do you think that they did that? Alyssa, they did. They, they, uh, that's who we want to be. That's, that's what we'd see on drives, but we didn't even see it for whole quarters, much less an entire ball game. And uh, I'm so proud of them. Now the big question will be uh, they, they can't get too full of themselves because they did well. They've got to come back and do it again this week. So if they can get to be that offense every week, we've got a chance to be really good. What do you see out of Javante Williams and Michael Carter as far as feeding off of each other? It seems like they kind of hype each other up, but also are competitive in a beneficial way for the team. Yes, uh, Alyssa, they're, they're, uh, they're great young people, number one. Uh, they're, they're so respectful of each other, and they have um, no jealousy at all. They're not selfish. If Michael runs it all the way down, Javante takes it in for the touchdown, you know, you got some players in your past that would say, what are you doing, man? I'm the one that got it down here. And there's, there's none of that with these two guys. And I think it's out of respect. And they're, they're also quiet leaders on the team. Michael's more uh, outspoken than Javante. Javante never speaks. And, of course, he was valedictorian of his high school. So uh, I don't want to talk to him. He's too smart to talk to me. I just say hello. And I don't want him asking me questions uh, that I can't answer. But they're, they're, uh, I, I have to think that they're – among the best combination of backs in the country, if not the best, because uh, it really doesn't matter when one's in the game. They both can do everything well, and they, they will both be outstanding NFL players at, at some point. Uh, they've got power. They've got vision. They've got patience. They can catch the ball. They're, they're good pass protectors and did a better job in this game than they did against uh, Boston College. Uh, and at the same time, they're, um, they've got enough speed to take it all the way and enough power and and, and vision to, to make the inside cuts. So uh, we're really lucky to have those two guys. They, they are definitely our, our impact players. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Okay, Brennan Marks, go ahead. Hey, Mac, Brennan Marks from The Athletic. Thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, I, I hate to be the person to dwell on anything negative after a win like that, but you mentioned the penalties and the necessity of cutting those out. What are you seeing on tape that is sort of allowing these things to be a consistent problem? And, and how do you actually go about cutting them out now, now that you've seen three games worth of the same evidence? Yeah, uh, Brendan, I brought it up. I mean, it's, it's there, it's real, it's, it's ugly. Um, and, and I told the guys, we can't be considered a disciplined team with a bunch of penalties. I said, we act like we are and we're not having turnovers, but come on, man. So we have officials at every practice. We, we have them call every penalty and we document every one of them. We, we show it to them on video and the penalties you have in practice are the ones that show up in a game. Now we'll turn all those into the uh, ACC office and we'll get it back on, on tonight or tomorrow. That'll tell us three of them shouldn't have been called and 
there would have been two others that should have been called. I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff you get on Tuesday. But uh, the guys have just got to um, go back and do it. Two of them were false starts by Josh Azudu, who played better than any other offensive lineman. So I'm not going to bench him. Uh, and he hadn't played in a long time. And uh, they were jumping around and calling signals and stuff. And that, that he flinched twice. Uh, he's a very bright kid. So that's not going to happen. He'll, he'll be good. Uh, we'll get rid of that one. But then, the, and then you get the offensive pass interference with Diami. I mean, it's a, did he grab us? Did we push him off thing? It's a, it's a judgment call. The uh, um, not going to have that happen. Hadn't happened since we've been here. So uh, you've got to look at every penalty. Uh, Cedric Gray pulled one down on, on punt and he was, he was trying to get released and the guy was holding him and he took him to get him off of him and threw him down. That's offensive holding. I've never seen that call before. Um, so I, I think you go back, uh, Brendan, more than anything else, and you look at every penalty and instead of saying it's a problem, you try to fix the individual. And, and we had a holding call that was holding uh, on our offensive line. Um, so you just, you have to look at every one of them. And I think that's the, the, the biggest thing that you, you go through each week and you, you take the individual because these are individual penalties that hurt our team and you coach that individual. And, and we told the players, we have to decide if, if you're going to have penalties, are, are you playing well enough to be in there if you can't keep from having penalties? Uh, Dazzy's penalty of, of unsportsmanlike uh, conduct is, is uh, un, uncalled for. We're not going to have that, period. 100% and could have really cost our team and he knows it and he apologized for it. And then I was really proud of our team that with them having the two 15 yard unsportsmanlike penalties at the end as we stayed out of it, and we didn't get in a fight and cost ourselves a chance to have players playing this week. So, um, so I think the discipline's there. Uh, we've got to take it individually and clean it up. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Aaron Beard, go ahead. Hey, Mac, Aaron Beard with the AP. Um, I was thinking about what you said the other day after the game about wanting to buy a house in this neighborhood, about perception, I guess, of how you guys are in the top 10. And I was thinking, too, about, you know, 96 and 97, you guys had won eight, nine, 10 games even before you were in the top 10. So you'd sustained success over a longer period. I guess how important is that part of it, this idea of being more than just one highly ranked team, but something that has some staying power, something this program hasn't had a lot since you've let first time you were here. Aaron, it's the most important thing is that's who you want to be. Right now, when people put up the top five and they see the other four, they say, yeah, I got it. And then they see North Carolina and said, what are they doing in there? I mean, where, where'd that come from? Come on, man. They're not that good. Uh, we want it to be where when they put us in there, uh, we've earned that right. And if, if, if we don't play well, we'll be out fast. Other people drop a little bit if they don't play well, and that 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 will not be our case because uh, I don't think that that we've earned the right over time. Maybe we are in the first three weeks one of the top five teams in the country, but we haven't been over time, and and we were when I was here before. We we were somebody every year that they said uh, I think we were the, we were tenth in the country the year before, so they people were saying yeah look out North Carolina's good. Nobody said that. To this point and and uh that that's what we are we missed too many tackles on saturday we're not getting sacks we're not forcing turnovers i mean i'm i'm in that group that uh um uh, it's good to be three and oh we're finding ways to win uh but uh what we we don't have any lock on number five in the country we got to play good and we got to play good every week to have a chance to to stay there or move up thanks mac thank you all right last one for coach from taylor vipolis taylor go ahead Hey, Coach Taylor Vip was from Inside Carolina. Sam, Mike, and Javante have all spoke about how much respect they have for that front five. And then you could see situations like Jordan Tucker having Sam's back after that targeting hit. It helps to have pure talent on the offensive line, but how much of a difference do you think it makes when they love the guys that they're blocking for? Taylor, it makes all the difference in the world. It, it, uh, it made a huge difference that we got Josh Azudu back because he gives you a guy who can rotate in that group. And um, Ed Montalus had to play 20, 30 plays instead of 60 or 70. Um, so it, it really helps you. But uh, I, I thought Jordan did have Sam's back after the, uh, uh, the targeting call, but he didn't get a penalty. And, and 
he, he, he went, he got Sam out of there, and then he, he got out of the way, which was uh, very classy. But the fact that we've had the same offensive line uh, last year and this year, unlike what's happening to us on defense, is really, really helpful for us offensively. Uh, the fact that these guys have been with Coach Searles for a year, the fact that they've been with Coach Longo for a year, they know what to do. And they know the calls to make and, and they know how to fix things. And uh, we had a little mix up on the one sack. We, we're still trying to get things fixed, but uh, uh, the best teams in the country have great offensive lines. When we won the national championship at Texas, all five guys went to an NFL team. Four of them played for a long time. Uh, so that's what you've got to do. And, and we've got all these offensive linemen coming back again next year. So it's, uh, it's exciting for us to see them play so well. And now what they've got to do is we can't walk around with our chest stuck out. We, we, we've got to go back to work, and they got to do it every week. But uh, uh, there, there's uh, great camaraderie and respect for each other right now on offense. Still trying to put all that stuff together on defense. Thank you. Thank Coach, you. Thanks so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Have a great week, and I'll see you Wednesday.